Hey guys, Bigfoot here. Well, today I want to talk about more than shelter and fire. What I want to talk about is foraging. And uh, foraging is important. It's a really important to know what you can eat out here. Because if you can't catch any fish, and you can't snare any rabbits, you can't shoot any deer, and you're just having a hard time getting meat protein, it's important to know other things that you can eat in order to stay alive and to keep your hunger at bay. So with that, we're gonna take a walk and we're gonna just dive into some of the edible plants that we have here around uh, my home here. And um, yeah, these plants can be found on most of the west side of the United States. Some of them can be found throughout the United States. First one's gonna be blackberry leaf. This leaf right here, that's a blackberry leaf. Blackberries are a nuisance plant uh, to most people here in this side of Oregon because they grow everywhere and they're hard to contain. As you can see, this blackberry plant forever. So, this plant, this leaf right here is 100% edible. And uh, the young shoots of the blackberry plant are also edible as a vegetable. So that give you a little bit of sustenance. And now we'll go on and we'll talk about some other plants. All right, let's take a walk. Well, we haven't gotten very far, and I see already this stuff right here. This stuff's called usnea. Usnea is a great antibiotic, um, and uh, it can be used for so many other things. But uh, this can be put in tea, chew on it. It's not very, not very appetizing but it's not that bad either. Um, but that's another one that we have, and, and you probably have in your area also. Usnea kind of grows everywhere. Anywhere where there's trees, uh, it grows oaks, uh, it grows on, it grows everywhere. So anyways, that's another one. And as I look down, here's a plant we do not want to try to eat. If you don't know, if you don't know what you're looking at, then you shouldn't eat it. And while some plants that look like this may be edible, my rule of thumb is if it looks like a carrot, don't eat it because it could be poison hemlock and poison hemlock can kill you. All right, let's stay away from those. And here's a curly dock. Curly dock is great in salad and uh, tastes good and um, it's high in vitamin C, uh, I think vitamin K, a few other ones, but it's a good, uh, it's a good one to know. It's easy to identify. Here's a better example of curly dock, right here. That's a curly dock leaf there. Finding natural uh, um, herbs and, and plants that grow out of the ground that you can eat is key uh, a lot of times in survival. I think it's a, uh, I think that uh, plants are something that people don't take advantage of enough. And uh, somebody I met a year or two ago said something very important, and that was don't forget about the little people. And uh, that's the herbs and the plants that grow out of the ground. And uh, I'm doing my best to learn as much as I can. You know, you never stop learning. There's always new plants to learn, new mushrooms, and it's important to be able to identify those so that way if you ever are stranded or, or in a survival situation, you've got something to eat. Um, you know, have you ever heard somebody say, hey, I'm cramping up, and then somebody else says, oh, well, you need to eat a banana. Well, because you need the potassium. So one of my favorite ways to get potassium out in the wild is this plant right here. This plant is called ribwort plantain you can eat it raw um, when they're young they're good as they get older they get very bitter but they're still good the bitters all the bitters are actually good when you're out in the survival situation ribwort plantain uh, is also good to make teas with if you've got a cough or you're sick um, you can make a spit poultice with it if you've got a abrasion or a cut uh, it's good for insects bites so yeah plantain is definitely a great uh, survival plant to know all right here 
we have this tree this is a this is a cherry tree and we have uh, cherry blossoms on it these blossoms uh, cherry blossoms which are these little things here are rich in in antioxidants vitamin C and a few other things and uh, they they're best eaten in small amounts you don't want to eat too many um, but a handful is fine and uh, you can make tea with it and it's uh, like I said it's, it's a great antioxidant and um, they have kind of a, a fruity flavor also almost like a when you smell a flowers or a rose if that makes any sense you can almost taste it on your tongue that's kind of what the blossom uh, effect is you can taste what it smells like this stuff here is called this stuff here is called miner's lettuce it can be eaten raw it tastes really good actually very nice sweet pleasant taste and uh, it makes a good salad it's got lots of vitamin A vitamin C um, and it's got some few health benefits which I'm not aware of all of them but I know that it's loaded with vitamins and it's uh, it's really good um, this is what it looks like in its young phases and uh, before it gets a flower and uh, like I said it's got one of the in my opinion it's one of the best tasting um, leafy edibles out here hey guys here's a manzanita tree and uh, right there easy to identify and manzanita is good it's a good vitamin C um, producer and it makes good firewood because it's hardwood burns for a long time and you can eat the leaves and the berries and the blossoms of this plant the leaves kind of have apple taste they're not the most appetizing but uh, they're edible they're better if you uh, add a couple leaves to some tea uh, it makes it a little bit more palatable otherwise they're kind of dry and bitter but yep that's the manzanita, manzanita plant willows provide good medicinal properties uh, like and and they're like an aspirin you can eat them they're not very appetizing <clears throat> and it would probably be my last choice for a food source um, and some people might have allergic reactions to it but it does make a good medicine and it's a good one to know it also is great for uh, starting friction fires and this uh, pussy willow can be uh, found and identified fairly easily by these real soft um, cat fur like uh, blossoms that they get in the early spring they're one of the earliest uh, shrubs to to blossom that's wild mustard and uh, it's it's good for the the young leaves you can use as salad um, as they get older they tend to get more bitter like a lot of the other plants that, that we can forage out here but you can still eat them you can use them as a green like spinach uh, cook them like spinach and uh, yeah it's a good one that's a good plant to know also and it's fairly easy to identify it's got a kind of a rougher a rougher skin out here a little bit rough on the edges with some really fine little I don't know if you could see them but super fine hairs uh, on the leaf all right well this plant's called chicory and it's good for salads and a few other things and I'm, you know a lot of these things are going to be good for salads and if you're not a salad eater that's going to suck but if you're out here starving you got nothing to eat a salad will be pretty damn good let me show you what it looks like. Um, well, right now it's early spring, late winter, so uh, it doesn't have the stock yet. But chicory is is good. It's a good plant to eat, and uh, the one of the uh, best things about chicory for me, if you like coffee, you can grind up the root of chicory and uh, make a coffee-like beverage. So, that's chicory. Okay, I know I've mentioned it before in a prior video somewhere, but uh, most uh, pine needles are edible and you can make teas with it and, um, you know, lots of pioneers and natives use it to keep away scurvy, uh, which is a lack of vitamin C. But this pine tree right here, you definitely don't want to eat or make tea with. And uh, this is the Ponderosa pine. It has really long needles and it's easily distinguished by not only its needles, but its big bulky bark. And this is what a cluster of those needles look like. 
really long seven to eight inch uh, long needles and there is a, tr a pine tree that looks similar to this but the needles are about that about that long five inches long or four inches long and that's a western white pine but if once again if you don't know how to identify don't eat it especially this one